today's video is going to be about glycolysis I will try and explain every steps involved in glycolysis because this video was pretty long I had to divide this video into part one and part two so definitely go and watch part two as well because this is only half of the information the other half is on uh, part two so let's just get started uh, first let's just look at the name glycolysis and we see the word uh, the, the suffix lysis this tells us that we are breaking down something whenever you see the word lysis just remember that it's it's going to break down something and for our purpose it's going to it's going to break down glucose and the first step is converting that glucose into into something uh, called glucose 6 phosphate glucose before I forget let me just tell you it is 6 carbon sugar <clears throat> and to convert that glucose into glucose 6 phosphate we have this enzyme known as hexokinase however during the process hexokinase uses 1 ATP so that's our first investment in glycolysis it uses 1 ATP to convert glucose to glucose 6 phosphate and whenever you see the word <coughs> kinase, just remember that it uh, attaches a phosphate from ATP into a uh, onto a specified molecule. Uh, in this one, it, it attaches that phosphate um, on on sixth carbon of glucose, hence the name glucose six phosphate. That's how this name came. So the next step is to go from glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate. And that's basically opening up the ring structure. And we have this enzyme, <coughs> phosphoglucose isomerase. Again, the, word of the, en the, the name of the enzyme, isomerase, that uh, tells us that it, it converts one form of isomer into another form. And before I forget, let me make it clear that it's a double-headed arrow. What that means is it, it, uh, you can go from uh, glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate and from fructose 6-phosphate to glucose 6-phosphate using, using this particular enzyme, using a phosphoglucose isomerase. That doesn't happen in here. You cannot go from glucose 6-phosphate to glucose using, using hexokinase. Whenever we use ATP, it's usually going to be one-way reaction. Here in, in this uh, phosphoglucose isomerase uh, uh, step, we don't use ATP. No ATP is required. That's why it's, it's a, a two-way reaction. So the next step is converting that fructose 6-phosphate to, to something called fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So we... We just added one more phosphate to that thing, to, to fructose 6-phosphate. Uh, and this is a pretty important step in glycolysis. In fact, if you are in, in an intro-level biochemistry course, this step is most commonly asked in your, in your exams and, and your finals. Uh, Phosphofructokinase is the enzyme involved. And this enzyme is also known as P F K1 in particular <coughs> and this enzyme also uses 1 ATP as we can see from the name that one phosphate from ATP is attached to the first carbon of fructose hence the name fructose 1,6 bisphosphate so the one is for the carbon number one phosphate in carbon number one six is for the phosphate in carbon number six and the bis tells us there are uh, two phosphates involved in this molecule hence the name phosphofructokinase and I mean uh, fructose one six bis phosphate sorry phosphofructokinase is this step converting from fructose six phosphate to fructose one six bis phosphate is is a committed step in glycolysis what that means is once you uh, once you pass once you pass through this step you are definitely going through glycolysis 
this is also a rate limiting step in glycolysis actually converting from glucose 6, uh, glucose to glucose 6 phosphate using hexokinase is also a rate limiting step whenever we use atp in our reaction it's going to be rate limiting step okay so up until this point we still have six carbon sugar we have two phosphate but we still have six carbon sugar however the next guy Aldolis does something different. It divides that six carbon sugar into two, three carbon sugar. Uh, glycerol, uh, glycerol aldehyde three phosphate, also known as G3P. It's a three carbon sugar. Three carbon sugar, known as G3P. That's how this name came, and this is also a dihydroxy acetone phosphate DHAP that's also a three carbon sugar so the next step in glycolysis is is to convert a uh, uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate into something else which I will discuss in another video the second part of this video <coughs> however we cannot convert a uh, dihydroxy acetone uh, phosphate into another product of glycolysis but what we can do is we can convert this guy into G3P we can convert a DHAP into G3P using this enzyme called triose phosphate isomerase again we see the word isomerase that basically converts one forms of isom one form of isomer into another <coughs> in this case we're going from DHAP three carbon sugar to G3P another three carbon sugar and from there we can continue the glycolysis step okay and uh, oh this is also a two-headed arrow double-headed arrow double-headed arrow if no ATP is involved then it's going to be double-headed arrow <coughs> meaning the reaction happens both way depending on the amount of concentration of, of either product or, or reactant now let me just uh, give you guys some quick facts about glycolysis that uh, uh, people usually mix up now uh, glycolysis happens in cytosol or a cytoplasm whatever you call it and uh, it doesn't require oxygen no oxygen is required so aerobic anaerobic fermentation all this kind of process uh, involves with glycolysis somehow so glycolysis happens before this uh, this process has happened and uh, it uh, requires two ATP as an investment two ATP and we've already seen those two ATP used one is used uh, during the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate to I mean glucose to glucose 6 phosphate using hexokinase the other one is used um, uh, in the conversion of fructose 6 phosphate to uh, fructose 1 6 bisphosphate uh, with uh, with the help of enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 BFK1 <coughs> okay uh, before I end this video I just wanna uh, give you guys a uh, two questions actually just just wanna see how you guys think so imagine we have some kind of mutation in this enzyme triose phosphate isomerase what do you think will happen uh, to the glycolysis uh, process okay so that's that's first question the second question is uh, imagine we increase the concentration of uh, ATP during the conversion of, of fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate what do you think will happen? so there you go the, those are my two questions uh, please uh, write your answers in the comment section below and I will see you guys in the second part of this video <coughs>